Good morning, everyone. Um, apologies for the technical challenges. Uh, we are starting a couple of minutes uh, later than usual. My name is Jumoke Akin Taylor, and I'm the hearing officer for San Francisco Public Works. Cherise is the clerk of this hearing, and the hearing has been recorded. And um, so the hearing is to consider a few items here, tree removals, and hearing order number 206565, the removal of one tree with replacement adjacent to 136 Delmar Street. The second order number is 206566 uh, to consider the removal of two street trees with re replacement 730 Pine Street. Third order number is 206567. And this is to consider the removal of two street trees with replacement at 3669 21st Street. And the next one is here in order number 206568, removal of one street tree with replacement 1378 Church Street. And the last uh, order number is 206569 to consider the removal of one street tree at 335. Jesse, Jesse Street. Now, um, so my job as the hearing officer is just to gather the facts uh, for this item, listen to your testimony that will help our interim director make the determination. I will not be making any decisions today. Instead, I will forward the findings from this hearing and make my re recommendations to the interim director. The director will make the final determination. When the director's determinations are made, the department will notify you of them. Therefore, if you want to be notified, I believe Sharice will tell you how to send your information. And the way this, the hearing goes is, I will ask the public work staff to speak first and present the case, and then I will ask any appellant to speak. We will all have, each speaker will have up to three minutes to speak. The clerk will monitor the time for the speakers, when you hear the first chime, it means you have 30 seconds left and the second will signal that time is up. Comments and questions should be addressed to me and um, not to the applicant or, but if you cannot finish your comment within the allotted time, you can submit reading testimony to me by the end of the hearing. If I feel that a question is warranted, I will ask the questions. All comments are, once all comments are completed, I will close that item and we'll move to the next one. So make, I would ask that we begin with item number, agenda hearing order number 206565 and public work staff will make the presentation. Excuse me, Miss uh, Hearing Officer. Can we have item number two first, which will be public comment? Now, this is for any items that are not on today's agenda that someone wants to bring up and have recorded into the um, into the record. Okay, Sharis. So, are there any items that need to be addressed that you would like to have? and entered into the record today, please raise your hand. Those are the items outside this order numbers that we just talked about. Correct. Okay, hearing none, I think you can proceed. Okay, so the first order we're gonna be hearing on is 206-565. Stacy, do you wanna make your, oh, Sarah, Sarah, please go ahead and make your presentation. Good morning. My name is Sarah Stacy. I work for Bureau of Urban Forestry as an urban forestry inspector. And I'm sharing my screen. So welcome everyone. Um, thank you for your time and participation in this public process, um, this public hearing this morning. Again, my name is Sarah Stacy. I'm representing Bureau of Urban Forestry. 
Our team of inspectors are all qualified as certified arborists, and uh, many of us have tree risk assessment qualification as a credential. And so our decisions to approve or deny tree removals are guided by both the Public Works Strategic Plan and also Article 16, which is the Urban Forestry Ordinance. And some of those um, important uh, codifications or um, legislation outlined that um, as a bureau, uh, we are to work to realize the optimum public benefits of trees and to preserve trees that are healthy. So um, when we are assessing and reviewing these removal applications, um, th that's one of the first things we do is we assess if the tree is healthy and that means both in um, uh, it's, it's structure and also it's vigor. Um, so if it's has good structure, good condition, and um, the leaves canopy is healthy. So we look at that first. Uh, we also want to reduce the public hazard, nuisance, and expense occasioned by the improper tree selection and maintenance. What this means is um, many times in the city, uh, trees aren't always necessarily chosen uh, based on the principle of right tree, right place. Um, sometimes we choose trees, uh, you know, based on the landscape architect might think it looks good, um, but we don't take in to account the maintenance down the road or how large the tree may grow or how close the trees are planted together. So, um, so sometimes trees outgrow their space. Sometimes they become hazards over the street because of lack of clearance. Maybe they started to lean while they were establishing. Um, so we, we do understand that sometimes there are conflicts that occur um, with healthy trees that impose a nuisance or a hazard to the public. Um, so we do certainly take that into account when we make these decisions about tree removals. And then um, also as another point, we recognize trees as essential to the city's environment and that the removal of trees should be addressed through appropriate public participation. So again, I thank you for this process and your participation in this dialogue and all your comments and written testimony that was provided. Um, our department works to ensure the safe, clean, and green infrastructure of the public right away. So we do have to balance both um, the existence and preservation of healthy trees while protecting a safe public right away. So we always have to be assessing if a tree is safe structurally and if it may pose a risk to the public. So we take, uh, we take all those things into consideration. I did want to just take a, a quick minute to um, provide an update on Article 16, which is the Urban Forestry Ordinance. It was updated recently with some new legislation um, that was effective in February of this year, February 22. Um, and we'll go over those new um, things that became codified into law. A removal permit is required to remove a street tree, a significant tree, and also a landmark tree. Uh, street trees are any uh, woody, woody trees within the public right of way and um, applicants or property owners uh, have to do their due diligence and understand um, what the width of the public right of way is. It can vary across the city. Um, and significant trees, those are trees on private property, but they require um, a removal permit if they're within 10 feet of the public right of way and meet <clears throat> one of three size criteria. And that's uh, 20 feet in height or 15 uh, foot spread canopy or a 12 inch diameter trunk when measured at about four and a half feet off the ground. And so the image on the right is a picture of a significant tree example on Gene Way um, close to the Richmond district. And so some of the updates that are important that I want to uh, address here and emphasize is that the, if the department is removing a tree, a replacement tree is required within 120 days or it must be added and tracked on a delayed replacement tree report. If a tree cannot be planted in situ, so in that same location, then it must be replaced at a nearby location. In the past, um, we 
the department would maybe pave over a site if it could not be replaced because of a conflict with a utility or lack of sufficient space. And um, we're not necessarily looking for nearby replacements. So this, this new part of the ordinance requires a replacement tree in a nearby location, and we need to track that. And then finally, if the property owner or applicant is granted a removal permit, the department shall require a replacement tree of equivalent value to the one removed or imposed and in lieu fee. Um, there's a diff few different ways this kind of um, breaks down kind of case by case, and we'll discuss that um, with the cases um, presented today on the agenda. Um, but basically, as it states, a replacement tree is required what we consider the equivalent value is basically the in lieu fee. So right now the in lieu fee is 2,230 or a 25, 24 inch box size tree. And then just finally, um, Street Tree SF. Um, this is the program that is overseeing the tree maintenance in the city. This was, um, uh, backed by voters in the city in 2016 and became effective in July of 2017. So we're coming up on five years of maintaining uh, the street trees, which means pruning and also making sidewalk repairs around street trees. We've pruned more than 40,000 trees um, at this time, and we've taken care of some of the worst uh, trees and worst condition trees in the city. We still have a lot of work ahead of us and a lot of work to accomplish over the next couple of years so we can complete that first full cycle of tree maintenance. Um, and then we'll be moving into um, the second, second cycle. And this pruning cycle should run every uh, three to five years. So um, we are a little bit behind. We have a lot of work ahead of us the next two years to get contracts together and issued um, so we can keep up with taking care of uh, close to 125,000 street trees. Uh, so thanks again for your patience. Um, this order number 206565 is to consider the removal of one street tree with replacement adjacent to 136 Del Mar. Our staff denied the removal and the applicant appealed. So this application at 136 Del Mar was to remove a New Zealand Christmas tree, Metro Sideros Excelsa. Um, our staff rated and evaluated this tree as in fair condition. It has an approximately 20 inch diameter trunk and is approximately 40 feet high. We appraised its value based, based on the conditions at approximately $14,000. And that takes into consideration the size of the tree, the condition, the branching structure, the, the canopy, but also the site context, its growing location, and any functional or site limitations to the tree, such as you know, the narrow sidewalk, um, the urban environment, those types of things. The applicant applied to remove this tree um, for new construction, uh, in addition of a curb cut and garage. They are proposing to replace this tree and, and additionally plant two, two replacement trees in empty basins nearby. This is the site plan. Um, the planning department approved this plan for the new building and garage. Um, we have a hold on releasing the site permit and the building permit number is there for you to reference 20181207 here in the image, we see um, the existing tree is shown by that blue square or box. Um, in the driveway, I've shown here um, with the dashed lines. So there is a conflict uh, between the proposed new driveway and the existing tree um, that the planning department approved this design. The uh, proposed new trees are shown there in green. This is the um, subject tree. It's, uh, we would say this tree is in good, fair condition for the species. It has a very robust, dense, healthy crown. Um, you know, no major deficiencies. We don't see a lot of failures with this species. These photos are from April of this year. 
And um, we would rate its structure as fair. Uh, we do recognize that the tree doesn't have uh, what would be considered more of a, a good, strong, single leader trunk. It has many um, multiple uh, scaffold limbs here coming out of the main stem. Uh, but again, we don't see a lot of failures from this species, so we rated the structure as fair. This is the tree um, shown in sight with the context of the narrow sidewalk. The sidewalk is approximately seven and a half feet, um, a, a narrow basin. There's not much room for expansion. There is some sidewalk damage currently on site and a narrow path of travel um, that does meet the ADA accessibility requirements of four feet. And this is the other view of the sidewalk, just showing some of the surrounding utilities, the water, gas, and sewer. If this tree is removed and based on the site plan, a tree can be replaced in front of the parcel. So just to summarize, the applicant is proposing to plant three 24 inch box replacement trees, one tree on the frontage, of 136 Del Mar as shown on the plan, and then two trees and empty basins nearby. Our staff, we denied the removal because the tree is healthy and in, in good condition, and we appraised the value for approximately 14,000. If the tree is approved for removal, it would be on the condition that those three 24 inch box trees are planted and the department would assess uh, approximately 7,000 for the remaining value of the tree. We calculated that based on the appraised value minus three times the three in lieu fees or the three replacement trees. Um, and so uh, that would be the condition um, for this tree to be approved for removal. Uh, to be consistent with other cases, we, we denied the removal of this tree. Um, and I would say just mostly because it's healthy and in good, fair condition. Thank you. So I, I just have a question. So if this tree is not removed, they're not gonna be able to proceed with the new construction proposed construction, correct? I'm not too familiar with how so, other cases have played out. If you know, if the applicant would have to go through a redesign and, you know, they would have to go through, you know, that whole process again with planning on a redesign. Okay. Um, so, you know, simply like, yes, if the tree's not removed, they can't proceed with their plan that was approved by is. planning. That's okay. Thank you. So um, do we have the appellant? Yes, we have David Amour, and I'm going to promote him to panelist, and he is going to share a presentation with us. Okay, thank you. Mr. Amour, you will need to unmute yourself again, and then you will be able to, uh, to share. Okay, good morning, can you hear me? Yes, we can, and we can see your screen, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, my name is David Armour. I'm the owner of 136 Del Mar and also the architect. And you will have three minutes for your presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, subject tree is growing in a three by four tree well with narrow corporate sidewalk, barely enough to be ADA requirements. The base of the trunk and roots have taken up all the available space. The site's too small for the species. The sidewalk curb has been displaced several inches into the street, and the sidewalk has been lifted several inches by the tree's roots. Sidewalk and curb replacement to city standard details are highly likely to destabilize the tree through excessive root cutting. The city recommends a very large basin and wide sidewalk for the species, such as this block of St. Joseph's Avenue. The structure is a single trunk that divides into five scaffold branches in the same location. Air roots original, excuse me, air roots originate in the juncture between the five scaffold branches and along the trunk. 
air roots and a branch juncture could sometimes indicate decayed wood. A probe could be inserted into the juncture about two to three inches before hitting solid wood. The San Francisco Planning Commission approved the proposed project for a new two unit building. The tree is in the footprint of a driveway of the approved design. Even with no driveway, required sidewalk and curb replacement may destabilize the tree. I am proposing to replace the tree in addition to plant and establish two additional trees on my own expense with city approval. One tree in front of the uh, subject property, one at 142 Del Mar, 144 Del Mar, and one in front of my office at 494 Hate Street, and the trees are rewatered by an irrigation bag weekly for two to three years after planting. Conclusions, the sidewalk and curb replacement to city standard details are highly likely to destabilize the tree through excessive root cutting. The existing tree species is too big for the limited growing space and narrow path of travel. The tree has multiple scaffold limbs attached at the same place with adventitious roots growing in and out of the juncture between these limbs. A probe can be inserted two to three inches into the juncture between the scaffold limbs. So the so planning commission approved the project, the design of which requires removal and replacement of the existing tree. Proposed driveway cannot be relocated due to other planning department requirements that came up during the design of the project. The proposed, 30 seconds. Excuse me? 30 seconds remaining. Okay, thank you. I'm just about finished. Uh, the proposed mitigation includes planting and establishing three replacement trees subject to city approval. I received six letters of support from neighbors and owners of the buildings at the locations of the proposed additional replacement trees. And we have a arborist report that was uh, dated March 14th that's been submitted to the public record as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any public comments for this hearing number? Yes, <laughs> any public comments? In the absence of any, um, hearing order number 206565 is now closed. We would move to the next hearing order number is 206566. And this is to consider the removal of two street trees with replacement adjacent to 730 Pine Street. Sarah? Hi, this is Sarah Stacy, Urban Forestry. This is order number 206566 to consider the removal of two street trees with replacement adjacent to 730 Pine. The staff denied the removals and the applicant appealed. The applicant, applicant submitted a removal permit 789244 for the removal of two ficus trees adjacent to the property 730 Pine Street. And we denied the removal permit the two subject trees are both ficus trees, um, small to medium sized ficus trees. This is what we consider tree one, site one. We evaluated it in fair condition. It's approximately a 13 inch diameter trunk and approximately 25 feet height. Uh, the tree was pruned under uh, SF street tree maintenance in 2021. So the clearance away from the building and fire escape was improved. Um, and at this time, uh, the clearances are pretty sufficient. These are some closer images of the tree. This tree one has sustained a branch failure. Um, it could have been from, from poor structure. It could have also been from um, lack of clearance over the road, a large box truck you know, may have hit this branch and tore it off. Um, but my my yellow arrows do point to um, kind of deficiencies we've pinpointed in the tree or which can be considered deficiencies in the tree structure um, where the scaffold branches uh, or stems are considered codominant and do not have good unions. So they're either very narrow, um, have included bark, and they're not U-shaped or um, wide with, with good branching attachment. So here that little blue shape um, shows some good structure, good attachment, good union, what we'd consider a good branching structure. And the yellow arrows point to the, some of the deficiencies. Um, but overall, we denied, denied both these ficus because they're relatively 
um, small in stature, small to medium size in stature, despite some of these um, branching issues. Um, this is the back side of the tree, or as you're looking um, from the sidewalk out to the street, so the back side of the tree. Um, again, this tree does does not have like a single leader or stem. It has multiple stems kind of originating from one point um, with close branching structure poor attachments. Um, there is some sidewalk damage. The city would need to repair the sidewalk here. The species, the ficus, is fairly uh, tolerant of sidewalk repairs. We could um, widen the basin as shown here with the white marks. Um, and, and this image also shows that the tree could not be replaced if removed because of the electric line. So we possibly could, could lose a site here if the tree is removed. And you can see the clearance here after the tree has been pruned by, by um, the maintenance program. This is tree two. It's also we rated as in fair condition as a 16 inch diameter trunk and it's approximately 25 feet high. Here's the image from the side. Um, this site also has some sidewalk damage. Um, with uplift in the path of travel, we would consider this a higher priority for repair, given that it's in the path of travel. So this, the city, we do need to um, make, make these repairs in a timely way. Um, this, this image here on the right is from uh, 2014 and does show the tree before it was pruned. Um, several years ago and it shows that very dense crown. So just to show the difference of, you know, what maintenance can do to improve both the structure of the tree, reducing the, the weight and load on some of those poor branching structures to reduce the risk of any branch failures and to also improve clearance um, for both the road, sidewalk and from the building. There's just another image of the sidewalk damage. Again, um, we don't necessarily approved trees removal just because they're sidewalk damage. This species is tolerant of repairs and some root pruning. Uh, we always have to make a closer decision once the sidewalk's excavated and we can see the roots. But in most cases um, with this species, some roots can be cut and we can expand the basin a little to preserve this tree and replace the sidewalk um, so we can keep the tree in place. Uh, my yellow arrows here show some previous failures. Um, these were uh, probably likely um, also codominant stems that ripped out or failed. Uh, one or two could have been from a truck. It's hard to know. Um, but again, just pointing out some of the uh, poor structure in this ficus. But overall, because of the small to medium sized stature, we denied the removal um, despite some of these what I would consider kind of smaller deficiencies. And here again, um, just showing again some of those poor unions. So a failure is possible, um, but because the tree's been recently pruned um, and the tree is smaller, we would consider the risk risk lower. So to be consistent with other cases, we denied the removal of these two ficus and the applicant appealed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, do we have the applicant on? Yes, I'm here. Please go ahead with your presentation. Oh, you're okay. Coming. So I have a uh, control of the screen so I can show some pictures. Okay, just one moment. I'll promote you to panelist. So let me see. Can you see? Oh, let me see. Okay, it's promoting you over. Now you will need to unmute yourself and then you will be able to share your screen at that time. Can you see the screen now? Yes, yes we can. Thank you. So, uh, and you, 
you will have three minutes for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Gerhardt. I'm the owner of uh, 730, 734, and 736 Pine Street. My uh, ex-wife owns uh, 732. This is a picture of the building. Um, I believe we planted these trees in 1997. They're about 24 years old. Uh, I definitely support the uh, city's environmental plans and uh, tree program, uh, but these trees are extremely large for in front of this building. Our uh, tenants uh, on the first, second, and third floor have no light coming into their buildings. So windows are completely blocked by the foliage. Uh, despite occasional trimming, and we of course did that trimming for, for 20 years. Um, despite the trimming, the tree, these ficus trees grow very quickly, so they refoliate very quickly, and there's no light coming in to these windows at all on this building. Uh, that also, I know the tree programs also supports environmental issues, and because of lack of light, it requires more uh, electricity to light these units and also uh, to heat them because they don't get any uh, sunlight. We've also had uh, fairly significant plumbing issues where the tree roots have gotten into the, the plumbing lines. We've had to uh, sort of, uh, cut those out every several years, as well as the uh, earlier mentioned uh, street repairs, which uh, cool. this is an image of the current condition. Um, so we've had um, the plumbing repairs here, our main line comes right out of the building, straight across here to the, I think it's on this side, straight across here to the city, uh, tied into the city in the middle of the street. As mentioned earlier, we've also had trees, uh, tree branches break off this tree when trucks have hit them and fall on cars. The uh, branch line is higher now with the growth of the tree, but this tree, which was, I'm not sure the diameter share, but it's a 24 inch diameter, it's a very large, much larger than the other tree that was presented on the uh, right side of this. Um, this bill photo was taken on March 24th of 22. I also have this photo here. Let me see. This photo here, which was taken on uh, July 3rd of 2020, showing the same sidewalk conditions. At this point, the city had marked the sidewalk for repairs. Uh, you can see this repair here would be here. This fallen corner is this fallen corner here. And this edge here is here. Uh, so two years have passed since the marking of these of this sidewalk for repairs. Repairs never happened. The lines have worn off since. And uh, the sidewalk is actually in worse condition now as it was before. These repairs, um, Yes, they can be repaired, but we've been repairing these every three to four years. Uh, 30 seconds. Since, since my ownership. So it's not a, uh, it's not as easy as repair it once and you're, you're good for 10 years. Uh, and also the tree trimming would have to happen uh, frequently in order to maintain that. Here's a, here's why I couldn't find the others, but this is one example from, uh, from November of 2009, where we uh, had the city do the repairs for us. We had usually had 60 days to do the repairs. In this case, it was almost $1,200. The city took care of the repairs and then bills for it, but usually we hired uh, the contractors to do those repairs ourselves. So, uh, you know, I'm asking that I applied for two trees to be removed. I think that it's not the right tree for the right location. There's very little clearance between the building and the tree. In most cases, yes, right after you trim it, it's, it's cut back from the building, but it quickly grows back. And at most, in most times, even after trimmings, it's touched the building and expands out into the street. And it, it goes up to the third floor, the top of our third floor of the building right now, above the garage. So it's a very tall tree. So we ask that Thanks. permission be granted to remove that. And uh, I guess I would say that I'm more concerned about this tree on the left than this tree on the right, which can't be replanted. I didn't realize that, I was never told that. But um, this tree is a smaller, for whatever reason, they were planted at the same time, but this tree is slightly smaller than the larger tree. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Um, do we have public comments on this? On this order number 206566. Uh, in the absence of any public comments, I would like to thank um, all of you that have made your comments and your presentation. 
and this order number is now closed. We will move to the next one, which is order number 206567. And this is to consider the removal of two trees with replacement adjacent to 3669 21st Street. Go ahead, Sarah. Hi, this is Sarah Stacy, Urban Forestry. This is order number 206567 to consider the removal of two street trees with replacement adjacent to 3669 24th Street. Our staff approved one tree and denied one removal and the applicant appealed. This agenda item is related to removal permit 789165, which was submitted this January of this year. And it was to remove one tree, the tree shown on the right, that's in that was in poor, bad condition, um, dying and very unhealthy, poor condition, the locust tree. Uh, we told the property owner at the time that they needed to protect the tree on the left, the pepper tree, and preserve it during construction. Um, their building project is to erect, to erect a new building. So the applicant applied to remove one tree in poor condition. The building permit released on condition that the pepper tree was to be protected. Uh, the locust tree had significant dieback in the canopy and fair structure and was in decline. We approved the locust for removal and denied the pepper tree for removal and required preservation of that tree for the uh, building permit to be released. An urban forestry inspector visited the site to discuss the tree protection plan and discovered that the locust tree was removed. And uh, they believe maybe that the tree failed um, itself just naturally. Uh, we don't you know, have cause to think the tree was removed necessarily without a permit. We think may it, maybe it actually had failed. These trees can become um, very brittle very quickly um, as, as they die. So in April of this year, the applicant applied actually to remove the pepper tree um, and cited grading changes required for the driveway and sidewalk. So just to summarize again, we had approved the removal of the locust tree and had said, you know, for urban forestry to release your building permit, you need to protect the pepper tree, which was in good condition and healthy. And in, in April, the applicant um, came to us and said they need to remove the pepper tree and we denied it. The California pepper tree has some thinning and dieback in the upper canopy. It has some codominant stems originating from the main branch union. It does have a slight established lean along the sidewalk toward the driveway and there are some suckers um, near the base of the tree which can be an indicator, a sign that the tree is in decline or, you know, is kind of like struggling. It's wanting to put out energy in these like young, fresh shoots. Our staff, um, you know, assess that the tree is sustainable in this location. Some corrective pruning can help the tree structure and um, improve or reduce any risk of the tree failing uh, because of that lean. The sidewalk disturbances from roots can be repaired and the tree retained on site. This is the site plan, the original site plan, and it shows the driveway to the south of the existing pepper tree. Um, here's the driveway and here's the pepper tree. So this tree was supposed to be retained. We approved the locust for removal. And this plan shows that there is room for two trees with the current driveway. It's just another image of the two subject trees, the locust on the right and the healthy pepper tree on the left. This is a current photo of the empty basin. That's where the locust tree um, failed. We you know, assume because it was pretty much dead. That site can be replaced. And this is the revised site plan that the applicant submitted and it shows the driveway now in conflict with the existing pepper tree. 
it was shifted um, and the plans do show that three replacement trees can be planted for the requirement of this new building. Um, so for the frontage, the linear frontage would require three trees and the plan shows that three can be replaced. To be consistent with other cases, we denied the removal of the healthy pepper tree and you know, would want it preserved in the driveway um, located you know, in accordance that the tree can, can be sustained. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have the Do you have uh, a sheet of the old design that did not that the driveway did not conflict with the pepper tree? Okay. This is the original site plan. Okay. This is um, that we have. Plan. Okay. Got it. Thank you. I'll look at it. Thank you. Do we have the applicant? Are you done, Sarah? Yes. Thank. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have the applicant? Go ahead. All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can. This is Corey Moxon with John Menescalco Architecture. And we are here on behalf of the appellant, which is the project applicant. And I will present if that is allowed. Yes. Okay, just one moment. I will promote you to panelists. After you come over to the side of panelists, then you will need to unmute yourself and then you'll be able to share your screen. Okay, thank you for your time today. The subject property that we have here is 369 21st Street, of which you can see has a average site slope of 22.5% in the lateral direction moving from west to east. The subject tree is the 12 inch Peruvian pepper tree from our arborist report, which states is in poor health with the low vigor, poor foliage density, and extensive branch and twig dieback that can be seen in the most recent images of the tree. The site is unoccupied and unmaintained as the project is under development through the planning and building department. From the trees, downhill lean with predominantly uphill roots in the tension side and an asymmetrical bundle. There's extensive damage to the sidewalk and adjacent utilities predominantly the electric meter, moving towards the sewer clean out, the water meter, and potentially the adjacent city maintained street light. The previously proposed location of the driveway that was shown is actually the existing condition, which shows the existing historic home that has been approved for demolition with an existing non-conforming curb cut to access a collapsed and since removed garage structure that is no longer accessed and used. You can see in this image the location of the pepper tree, the street light, the impacted electrical box, and the direction towards the storm clean out and the water meter. The originally proposed and approved protection tree area had the curb cut in the existing location brought into conformance at a 10 foot width, which would create an undue and extremely difficult access path for the client's use model with the typical travel from west to east down the 22.5% 21st Street back up and into this site at an effective 28% slope across the sidewalk and into the San Francisco Planning Department approved garage location. The Department of Public Works has requested that there is no warping in the lateral direction across this sidewalk. There's a six foot conformity zone proposed in order to maintain a uniform cross slope across the sidewalk. 30 seconds remaining. Which would create a steep and sharp inability to access the drive with many typical sedan vehicles. 
the proposed site plan would allow for a direct access with a 11 and percent average slope into the garage, creating a much more amenable and easily accessed in and out of the site condition. And highly improve the car clearance for a typical sedan of which the clients would typically use. This can be seen in this elevation of a direct travel path of which we would propose three trees to be replaced. That's your time, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any public comments on this order number? We have one. Uh, Mr. Penn? Yes, hello. This is, yeah, this is David Penn, and I am actually an agent of the project, and I just wanted to provide a little bit of clarification, if I may, on the history of the project. Thank Please you. Please go ahead. Thank you, hearing officer. So yeah, I mean, initially, I think Corey, the project architect mentioned this, but you know, initially we had hoped, believed that the pepper tree could be preserved, but as Corey has just demonstrated, you know, upon further analysis of the, you know, of the sidewalk and the project, you know, he came to the projects come to the determination that it's, it's really the, the pepper tree is, it's just a, it's a, it's an impediment that just can't be overcome. And, also just wanted to clarify that the permit that was issued, um, you know, when we still believe that the pepper tree could possibly be preserved was the site permit. So it's not a, just a, a point of process, but it is not a construction permit. It is the, you know, planning entitlement uh, uh, permit. Um, and in the, in the process of, you know, uh, once the planning entitlement is done, then the construction of the, the project, the, build, the, build, the, build, the buildability of the project is more fully analyzed and explored. And at that point, the project design team, including the project architect, um, discovered the, you know, the sort of infeas infeasibility of the pepper tree remaining where it was. So I just wanted to provide a little bit more of that nuance and, and color there in, in terms of the, the history of this tree and the history of the project's application for its removal. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it? Do we have any other public comments on this order number? Are there any other public comments? Okay. In the absence of any, um, this the order number 20657 is closed. I want to thank everyone for your comments. And also uh, I had stated I'm, I'm going to send the recommendations to the director. And once the director issues her decision, we would email it to you. So this is going to be the case for all the other numbers that we hear today. Thank you. So if they are not, we would move on order number, the hearing for order 206567 is now closed. We will move to um, hearing order number 206. 568, and this is to consider the removal of one street tree with replacement, which is sent to 1378 Church Street. Please go ahead, Sarah. Hi, this is Sarah Stacy with Bureau of Urban Forestry. Again, this is order 206568 to consider the removal of one street tree with replacement adjacent to 1378 Church Street. Our staff approved the removal and the public protested. This uh, removal is related to removal permit 789222. So the applicant applied to remove one ficus with the replacement at this address. We approve this ficus for removal based on some of the rem removal criteria outlined in DPW order 183151. This order was initiated by uh, the previous director of public works. Um, around 2015, after there were several large ficus trees um, that failed and damaged property and um, also injured uh, persons. Um, so uh, this order outlined uh, some rem removal criteria for ficus trees specifically outlining um, things inspectors in the Bureau should look at and assess um, when they evaluate ficus trees. Uh, such things include large stature. So this is a, a fairly large ficus tree, much larger than the examples we've seen 
in previous orders um, during this hearing. Um, we'll demonstrate some areas of poor structure. And then also this tree um, in terms of its site contacts is located adjacent to Muni lines. So we also look at the impact it could have on infrastructure, including utility lines and Muni lines. Um, so for those collective reasons, the large stature, the poor structure, and then also the adjacent Muni lines, um, our staff, we approved the removal of this ficus tree. Uh, these are just some additional photos looking closely at the structure here. The yellow arrow indicates um, where uh, two of the stems, codominant stems, have a poorly attached union. Um, it's very narrow and, and narrowly attached a V-shape. And then my blue line, if we follow this line, um, we're going to look at it from the other side and um, see how this, this large um, scaffold limb uh, is poorly connected to those three main stems. So we, we do not see or do not have wide U-shaped unions, but instead very narrow shaped V-shaped unions among these three stems. Um, and, and these points are where the tree can have failures and these large stems can fail um, and cause damage to both people, um, property and, and the muni lines. Uh, yellow arrow again, just showing um, where the tree has poor structure. Uh, here you can see those three main stems where they originate from one main point uh, with a narrow area of attachment. The sidewalks, um, you know, here in good condition, this image just is meant to show that the tree can be replaced here. Um, there's no conflict uh, with water, sewer, or gas. This site um, should be able to be replaced in kind. Um, and that's what the applicant wants to do. Um, to be consistent with other cases um, where there are large ficus with poor structure adjacent to muni lines or other utility lines, we approve this tree for removal. And in this case, the public protested. Thanks. Thank you. Do we have the applicant? Presentation from the applicant? Yes, we have Brett. Hi, how are you? Um, I was actually wondering if the public who protested would want to go ahead of me. Okay. Do we have... Um, the... um, they are not present today, okay. but sent in their written comment. Oh, they have sent in their written comments? Yes. Okay. So do you want to go ahead, Brett? Okay, so just to be clear, the public that protested is not on the call. They did not show up to the hearing. Yes, but they sent in a written comment. Okay, um, well, then I would like to share my screen. Let me see if I can figure out how to do that. Okay, um, it'll prompt you after I promote you over to prom to panelist, and then it'll um, you will see a prompt. So just one moment. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Join as panelist. We can see your screen. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Okay, it, it muted me. Yes. Um, okay. Um, three minutes. You will have three minutes. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Thank you, Cerise. Okay, um, so as we just heard uh, from the department, this is uh, our presentation in support of uh, the department's findings. We'll talk a little bit about um, the order, why, that it was approved, the support that it has from the neighborhood, and the future plans uh, once we're able to remove the tree and help beautify the local neighborhood. So uh, the public order, as mentioned, uh, put in place after a couple of large ficuses were um, causing a lot of damage to the to people and property within the city. I think what's important to take away from this is that the the department does not have to approve removal, and it it if they think that something can be mitigated, the problems can be mitigated through pruning or other intervention. 
In this case, the application was approved, which means that the department did not uh, did not determine that uh, there were other mitigation steps. Uh, furthermore, and, and this is as the department mentioned earlier, that um, removal of the trees will impact or can impact the total total street tree canopy. And as the as such, the trees will be any tree that's removed through this order will be required. Uh, to be replaced with a large stature replacement species. This is something that we are, uh, the applicant is uh, aware of, um, aligned with, and uh, very excited about actually. So uh, a few of the reasons were given before, but uh, this tree has five uh, various failure points, uh, not one, not two, not three, not four, but five. Uh, those five are listed on uh, this sheet here. Um, so there are, as outlined before, the competing codaminate stems. Uh, so I think the department has already walked through that. Uh, there's also a poor live crown ratio, uh, and that's defined using the, the department's own words here, uh, and I'll show a photo in a second. There has been a history of root pruning. Uh, this is both on the, in the sewer lines. One has been, it was first repaired and then had to be completely replaced. The the sidewalk has also been shaved down a couple of times, and uh, despite it being in relatively good condition, the sidewalk is not flat. Uh, it has been uh, uprooted uh, multiple times by the tree itself. Uh, it is a large stature tree. It's more than 50 feet tall. And 30 seconds remaining. As mentioned, it threatens the muni lines. So here are the photos showing the off-center stature and uh, the height, as well as the commingled power lines and muni lines. Uh, the, our neighborhood is diverse. It includes city workers, landscapers, teachers, graduate students, female small business owners, retirees, and work from home workers and insurance, legal operations, and tech. Uh, everyone in the neighborhood is supportive of the tree being removed. Uh, what we see here are two photos taken from 9 a.m. on a full Sunday, uh, full sunny day, showing how dark it is with the complete blackout of sunlight. This is from the inside of the upstairs unit where you can see just a single sliver of sunlight that is making its way into the building. And what we plan to do is replace the tree with a deciduous and flowering tree, uh, large stature uh, from the approved list from the city. Uh, I'm also working uh, actively with Friends of the Urban Forest to create a uh, renewed garden and a sidewalk garden in front of our unit and along eight to 10 other frontages. This will be an opportunity for multiple street plantings uh, across ba existing basins and newly created basins. And uh, that project is already funded for our neighborhood and uh, pending removal, we'll be able to uh, move forward with the, with the project and uh, the plantings coming from that. That is all I have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, are there any other public comments for this order number? Do we have any public comments? Okay. In the absence of any, I will now close the hearing for this. Um, I would make my recommendations to the director and the director will issue the final decisions that will be emailed to you. Um, can we go, go with this with the this is hearing order number we just did by 206568. We're now, I believe, the last one, which is 206569. Go ahead, Stacy. Hi, this is Sarah Stacy. You can see my screen. This is yes, order number 206569. This is to consider the removal of one street tree with replacement adjacent to 335 Jersey Street. Our staff approved the removal of this tree and the public protested. Uh, this, this agenda item is not related to a removal permit. Uh, public Works initiated this removal and I, it's actually because of the sidewalk repair that we need to make here. Um, this is the subject tree. It's a ficus tree, um, kind of smaller in stature. Uh, I would call it very <laughs> kind of squat. It has a very wide crown. Um, 
you know, in, in comparison to its height, it's very wide. Um, we approved the tree for removal because of the required root pruning for the sidewalk repair and also some of the poor branching structure in the tree. So we kind of evaluated the tree as fair condition, but we, you know, noted some of its poor branch structure. It has a 13 inch diameter trunk and it's approximately 18 feet high. This is the tree shown from the side. Um, it's hard to uh, distinguish or really see the sidewalk damage from this um, view from this side, um, but we'll look closer at it. There's a large root that basically um, runs uh, perpendicular uh, to the curb coming across from the trunk of the tree to the property. Um, here you can see some of the sidewalk damage uh, adjacent to the curb. Generally, if the sidewalk damage were only here, uh, we would consider this, you know, lower priority as far as a risk to the public. Um, we could even, you know, maybe if the sidewalk was just damaged here, we could expand the basin and not pour back concrete here and just put back DG. This is often a way we can mitigate um, tree removal and repair the sidewalk. We want to preserve trees where we can, um, but in this case, uh, this large root that is coming across. Um, perpendicular to the curb uh, from the trunk of the tree to the property. It's a large root that would have to be cut to make the repair um, and that could destabilize the tree and for that reason we approved the removal of this ficus. It can be replaced. You can see the gas and water there. Um, it meets the guidelines for a replacement tree. Uh, according to our notes, the um, we consulted the adjacent neighbors and they approved of the plan uh, to complete the sidewalk repair uh, that we believe would require the tree to be removed. Again, because um, of the substantial root pruning that may destabilize the tree. Um, here's some of the poor um, branching structure here, kind of like some previous examples, we can see where multiple stems are originating from the main trunk of the tree with poor attachments. Um, this tree, it is smaller. Um, it has a very dense crown. And if it, you know, if it was just a question of repairing the sidewalk where the curb, where the damage uh, was adjacent to the curb, I think we could possibly preserve this tree. But again, because of that large root that has to be cut, um, we approved the tree for removal and the public appealed. Um, so to be consistent with other cases, um, because of the possible destabilization of the tree, again, we approved it for removal. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Do we have the applicant? There's, there's no applicant okay, there's no, um, in this case per se, there's no removal permit. There may be the adjacent property owner um, may be in attendance. I'm not sure. So it was the public that protested this one. That, okay. So do we do we have um, public comments on this, or did, is the protester on? I don't know if I should call them the protester or the appellant um, because they appealed this, right, or protested. So do we have anyone? Yeah, we have someone. We have Joel. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, hi. Uh, my name is Joel. I live at 335 Jersey. I just wanted to say that you, I have the same photos that uh, that you all took, and that is a, a hazard, uh, both for walking. Uh, I, unfortunately, I love that tree, and uh, unfortunately, it's just the root structure that you, you uh, took a photo of uh, is a hazard. Our neighbors downstairs have a, a toddler who's learning to walk, and uh, that's at a little bit of challenge, they they have them on a um, a, a stroller, um, and there's people that walk throughout there uh, on Jersey Street, so it is a hazard. And the tree, as you see the canopy, it goes over to our neighbors to the east, and they have a hard time seeing when uh, uh, when they pull out of their their garage. Uh, so I wasn't sure what the process of this was. This is my first time, uh, but I wanted to just voice my my uh, opinion on this. Uh, and it wasn't sure why someone would protest, uh, but that's that. Thank you for Thank your you. comments. Thank you. Do we have any other uh, public comments? I don't see any hands up. 
from the public comments. Okay. In the absence of any public comments, um, I will close this last order number. And I want to thank everyone who took the time to give their comments and the presentation. Again, as I had mentioned, I would be making my recommendations to the director and the director would issue uh, the final decision on all these order numbers that would be emailed to you. So thank you all for your time and have a good day. Thank you. Have a good afternoon.